Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of two videos on the Mamiya ZM, the penultimate and quite frankly the best of the Mamiya Z series cameras. The Mamiya ZM was an interchangeable lens 35mm SLR. Now what that means is that it could take any 35mm film, it has an interchangeable lens, meaning the lens can be taken off and put a different one can be put on at any point when you're not taking a photo without ruining the images. And single lens reflex means the light comes in through the single lens to a reflex mirror through the prism and out through the viewfinder. It has a center weighted meter with shutter speeds of two seconds up to one one thousandth of a second and bulb. I could not find the viewfinder specs for this camera, but I'm assuming that like the rest of the Z series, it is the same as the ZE2. And if that's the case, viewfinder magnification is 85%, uh, 0.85x, and the frame coverage is 94%. Now what that means is that the 0.85 means what you see in here is 85% of the size of what will be on the film. The 94% frame coverage means that if what you are looking at right now is what is on the film, then you're going to lose 3% on each side and on the top and the bottom in the viewfinder. It still shows up on the film, you just can't see it in the viewfinder. It gives you a little bit of room to crop and post if you need to. It has a fixed focusing screen with a split prism and uh, split prism central focusing area and a micro prism collar within a matte field. Basically the standard focusing screen of the 80s. And the flash sync speed on this camera is 1 60th, which we know because that's in yellow. It also has auto exposure lock and automatic exposure modes, uh, which are accessible in the shutter speed dial. The camera's target market was intermediate to entry level users. It's a fairly stripped down camera with relatively few features and it's missing some niceties like the mirror flipping up with a self timer and an exposure value uh, dial with partial stop settings. It only has full stop settings. So this was not a professional use camera. You can also tell by the build quality of it. But for this was just this was intended realistically for casual shooters. It's essentially a full manual, fully manual camera with the ability to have aperture priority shooting. It also lacks many of the features of the higher spec ZEX, like shutter priority mode and a shutter dial A mode lock, meaning that in automatic mode, there's no lock for this camera. Interestingly, the film winder electronic connection on this camera only has four of the eight contacts and there's no rewind coupling for the winder on the camera. Uh, only in advance. The ZEX, by comparison, has a rewind coupling on it. So I said that this was the penultimate and best, and the reason it's the best is because it's also the most reliable today. The ZE, ZE2, and ZEX, uh, I have gone through multiples of all of those trying to get ones that work to make videos for this channel. So far, the only one I've successfully done is the ZEX. The ZM, has a much better reputation for being reliable today than any of the other Mamiya Z bodies. So even though it's missing a few features, if you want a camera that's going to work, this is gonna be your best bet. It was made by the Mamiya Camera Company in Japan from 1982 until no later than 1984. Couldn't find exactly when it went out of production, but we know it was before 1984 because that's when everything Mamiya 35 millimeter went out of production. It was preceded by the ZE2, which this built upon and added some of the ZEX's features too. So in terms of specs, it kind of splits the difference between those two. It was concurrent with the ZE, the ZE2 and the ZEX, as well as some of the Mamiya medium format cameras. And it was followed by nothing because at the end of this camera's production run, there were no more Mamiya 35 millimeter cameras. So let's go over the camera's features as we do, starting technically on the front with the strap lugs right here. This is what you would connect your camera strap to. Film rewind knob and lever right here. This is your uh, ASA ISO dial right here, which you lift up to adjust the setting for. 
and then your exposure value compensation dial right here. Flash, oh, your index right here as well for how, what your exposure compensation is. Flash hot shoe, shutter speed index, shutter speed dial, shutter button, film advance lever, frame count window and frame index, self timer, lock and unlock ready to shoot button. And this is your uh, cable release port right here. On the front of the camera, we have the self timer light, lens mount, your lens mount index is that little red dot right there. And the lens release is this button over here. On the camera's back, we have a film memo holder. So when you get your film, you tear the top of the box off and you slide it in there to remember what kind of film you have. And then we have the viewfinder window there. On the camera's bottom, we have the battery chamber, the film winder mechanical coupling, film rewind release, film winder electronic contacts, tripod socket, Mamiya Japan, and the camera's serial number right here. Inside the camera, we have the film cassette chamber, the film guide rails, which are these silver rails. The outer ones keep the film from moving up and down as it travels. The inner ones sandwich the film against the film pressure plate here to keep it flat so that the light coming in through the shutter is properly focused. Film tension sprocket, which helps guide the film through the camera as it moves and also keeps it from being pulled back by the film's spring memory. Film take up spool. Film pressure plate, as we saw, and this spring right here keeps the cassette over here properly aligned so that the film comes off of it smoothly and is rewound into it smoothly. Some notes on your Mamiya ZM. The ZE series cameras were the first with lens to body electronic contacts for transmitting information between both units, not just from the lens to the camera, but back and forth. The, Z, uh, the ZM entered production with a series of lenses specifically for the ZM. Those were the Mamiya C-Core ES lenses indicated by an S on the filter ring like this right here. And these have one fewer electronic contacts than the previous lenses, which were the E and the EF lenses. So my best guess on these is that, let's take a look at the back of the lens. You can see there are four electronic contacts right here. Previous lenses had a fifth one between this contact and that little screw right there. My best guess is that the fifth contact wasn't needed and it provided some functionality that wasn't going to be used as planned between the lens and the camera and subsequent cameras that were supposed to have been released after this. The ZEX was the only of the ZE series cameras that used these secondary pins as well. What all of them were used for, I couldn't tell you. I know they communicated aperture. Um, not sure, I don't think that they communicated distance. Um, and I couldn't even tell you exactly what information they communicated back and forth with each other. So unfortunately, one of the things is that when these went out of production, most of the information about them has largely been lost. Some things not to do with your camera. Don't leave your camera with the shutter ready to fire. Always trigger it before you're done. Even if it causes you to waste a roll of film, these uh, do have mechanical components in the shutters and you don't want to leave them with tension on those springs because that can weaken the springs. Don't touch the camera shutter because your finger oils can cause uh, the shutter leaves not to work properly over time. Also, if you push on the shutter leaves, you can cause them to skip their rails, which can jam your shutter and completely ruin it. Don't touch the mirror behind the lens because your finger oils can desilver the mirror, which can impair your ability to both meter and focus. Don't leave your camera in your car. The heat can cause lubricating oils to get onto the ap aperture in the lenses. And when, because the oils will get thin and when they get back to their proper viscosity, the aperture won't work properly. Also, cold can cause the lubricating oils in the camera and lens to break down and become gummy, causing things not to work. And just leaving your camera in your car is a good way to get it stolen and have your car broken into. You don't want to do that. Don't store your Mamiya ZM in a plastic bag or box because water does permeate plastic 
and it can cause fungus to grow in the lenses and some mildew can grow in the covering as well. Don't let your Mimia ZM get wet. It's not weather sealed and water will short out and ruin the electronics in it. And just remember that your Mamiya ZM is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. As long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So that's it on the first of my two videos about the Mamiya ZM. In this video, we just looked at what everything is. In the next video, we're going to look at what all of it does and talk about how to use the different functions on this camera to take photos. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.